Welcome back to the table. Today, Ryan and I are going to be taking a look at what looks like Tang Garden, but it's a whole lot more. This is the Tang Garden Seasons expansion, and there are many, many modules. We're going to be talking about four of them mainly, and then maybe just mentioning a couple. Well, yeah, there are like four core modules, and you're right. I mean, the game is still Tang Garden, but I think that these modules add so much to the game. It actually it really does change the oh. game. You almost feel like you're playing a different game with those base Tang garden mechanics. Yeah, for sure. Some of the modules will feel a little bit more like Tang Garden that you know and love, uh, but some of the other ones add things all the way up into like worker placement style yeah, mechanics. Yeah, it's very interesting. So everything is going to be quite a bit different. So we're going to talk about autumn, yeah. winter, yep. spring, yep. and summer. The four seasons. The four seasons. You got, them. you got all four of them. It's a clever name, I know. Uh, we're going to talk about those a little bit just to give you an idea of yeah. what's included. The general idea of what you're doing in them, this is certainly not a how to play for all of them because we'd be here for the next two hours telling you all yeah. that. Uh, but we're going to cover those briefly and then, like I said, mention the other two at the end. So with yeah. no further ado, why autumn. don't you talk about let's, Autumn, Let's Ryan. jump into Autumn. So all of these expansions add content, like some of the base content that you've seen, they like, like new decorations, tokens, yeah. and characters and things like that. But also, like we mentioned, just like modules that actually change up the game. And what Autumn adds is leaves. You have these like shiny, really pretty leaf tokens yeah. of all these different colors, and you have a little board here that's going to track donations, which I'll talk about. And the whole concept of this expansion is that you'll have these leaf tokens sprinkled out over the board, and you need to collect them. So you're collecting these leaf tokens for points, and you're collecting them, and you're putting them in a little bag for scoring. That seems simple enough. Yeah. But there's a whole twist here, because <laughs> every time you take one of these leaves, you can choose to donate it into a donation bag, and that's a separate bag. All players are gonna be choosing whether they want to donate their leaves into this bag or not, and this is kind of secret information. If you do, you get to go up on this donation track and get rewards, which is good. It's good to get these rewards during the game, but what you're really doing is you're also setting the value of the leaf tokens that you kept. So if I put a green look leaf into the donation bag, and then another green leaf into the donation bag. Now everybody's leaves are worth two points. The green ones, anyway. The green ones. So you need to like be watching what other people are doing. If David has a big supply, he's collecting a bunch of red leaves. I don't want to donate red leaves because I'm only making his red leaves more valuable. So if that sounds like it's going to hurt your brain, it will. Because you're always having to make that decision. You're getting immediate benefits by donating, but you might really be giving a lot of coins to other players. What you want to do is you want to try to see what other people are donating. If I notice David donated a blue, somebody else donated a blue. You might uh, want to bag those blues. Yeah, bag those blues, right? So, and there's a limited number of these leaf tokens out on the board, so you're not going to, you know, be able to constantly be refreshing this. Plus, of course, everything I've collected is hidden. Everything in the donation bag is hidden. So you kind of do have to track it, and you're not going to be able to. So at some point, you're just making your best guess with the information that you remember. Yeah, and which it, I, I think that's very interesting. Yeah. Not only that, but it includes a couple new decorations and a new yep. character. Yeah, two new decorations: the Kingfisher and Bamboo. Which some of the other modules are going to, you know, add decorations as well that can be mixed into the decoration deck. But the unique thing about these decorations is that they can be added to two different landscape tiles, which is a little, little bit of a twist there with these. In addition, each one of these modules comes with a character. The one that comes with Autumn is Painter. The Painter is going to give you one coin every time you pick up a leaf, so you're encouraged to do that. And at the end of the game, you're going to get to take two leaves that are remaining and put them into your bag. So you're trying to figure out the best value of these leaves, but it's also interesting because you're not scoring for what you see with this character. It's all about getting leaves and, and grabbing those leaves at the end of the game. Yeah, the whole thing is very much built around those leaves and that. Now, all the leaves, leaves have been raked up, though, for the next one. That's and, true. And that is winter. Winter is very cold. Uh, so when it's cold, you want to build houses. The first thing you're going to do is replace the starting tile with the new starting tile on the palace side. And that is effectively the core or center of the palace because you're going to randomly add these to the board as well, completing the palace and effectively zooming in on the map, making a lot less garden to decorate, right. but potentially a little more palace to decorate because the other big part of this module is roof tiles. You're going to add four roof tiles to each of the garden tile stacks. And as these come out, they will be placed on the actual roof spaces here on the outside first 
and then the inside. And when you place one, you're going to get the bonus of what you cover up. Right, there's a lot less space to operate with this expansion or this module since you do have that giant uh, palace in the center. So you'll notice that you have less area to actually play these landscape tiles. But those roofs, roof tiles are going to give you some really necessary bonuses. So they kind of make up for not having enough space on the outside because you're really more focused on building out the roof because all of those roof tiles have different icons on them, either circles or uh, diamonds, which are going to be very useful for scoring this particular module. Yeah, and that scoring kind of comes to the dragons that you're going to be putting on the roof. At the beginning of the game, you're going to put out these dragon discs on all of the corresponding spaces, but that is ultimately where a dragon is going to be built. Mm -hmm. uh, then you're going to take that disc knowing that that dragon is yours. Yeah, and the only way to build these dragons are to collect decorations. And you're going to be shuffling these decorations into the normal decoration pile. You have to collect these. When you collect them, they're going to give you some kind of advancement on your tracks or coins, maybe just for collecting them. And it's basically a set collection element. You're either wanting to collect two of the same color or three of any color. If you do, you're going to take that token, the dragon token, and you're going to place it out on the matching space. And you're going to take that as a reminder. Now, we have these prototype pieces here, but yeah. the actual final pieces will look like dragons. You can see them on the Kickstarter page, and they're going to be looking out into the roof. And I mentioned earlier those circles and those diamonds. So they're going to be scoring all of those circles and diamonds that they can see. But you're only scoring one icon. You're scoring whichever one is higher. So in this instance right here, well, it's definitely circles. You're seeing <laughs> two, three, four circles right there, and they're worth two points apiece. So getting these dragons out is important, but you can only ever place one dragon. You have one of these tokens in front of you that you can place during the game. Yeah, and that's in a four-player game. In a two-player game, each player is going to have two of these. And the other cool thing about these dragon pieces, and I remind you again, these are actual <laughs> dragons in the final game. During the game, because the garden's so much smaller, you're able to use these to reserve other types of decorations. Not the roof dragon right. decorations, but other dr decorations that would normally go on the garden. If you take one of those decorations and there's not a space in the garden for it, which is sort of one of the frustrating things of the original Tang Garden at times, is yeah. you don't have a spot for a decoration, you can actually put your dra unused dragon token on that decoration until such a space opens up and then as an optional action you can add the token to the board. Or if you end up placing your dragon on the roof, then you lose that card. You no longer have your dragon there to uh, hold it for you. Exactly. Now, there is another character that's added to this module, and that's the counselor. And of course, the counselor is going to key off of those roof tiles. He's going to get, uh, the owner of this card is going to get one coin for every roof tile added to the perimeter of the palace. And if they add one to the center of the palace, they're going to get two coins. And at the end of the game, they're going to get three coins straight up and then two additional coins for every roof tile that is in their line of sight. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, all of these characters are very specific to the modules that they come with. Yeah. And that's no different for Spring, which is the next module. I think Spring generally comes after winter. It does, in most... In most places in the world. Yes, in most places in the Not necessarily in Indiana. <laughs> Spring is all about the Lantern Festival. You're having this giant festival with these lanterns. These are new decorations that you're going to be able to place out onto the board. And these can go out onto most of the decoration spaces on the board. Now... A few things are going to happen whenever you place these lanterns out. For one, you're going to have the decoration card that you've drawn. Now, there are two parts to each one of these decorations. Of course, the top part, which is going to tell you which track you move up and which decoration spot it can go out on the board or which terrain type it can be. And then you're going to have this bottom card, which refers to this envelope. And you're going to be placing these lantern cards into this envelope. But what's interesting is that when you're showing your opponents that you're playing it, you're actually going to hide the bottom of the card. You're going to hide that coin information because after you've placed this, you're going to put the card in this envelope secretly. And this is kind of what you're going to be fighting over during the game. Everyone is going to be trying to maintain control of this envelope by making sure that they can see the most lanterns. However, you don't know what the value of this envelope is. Every single one of these decorations that I place in there is going to have a positive or negative value of coins. And we're all going to be adding into these. So if you place the most lanterns, then you have the most information as to what's in this envelope. And if I know that I placed a ton of negative coins in here, then I don't actually want my characters to be facing those lanterns. I just want to place them out. And you know, at the end of the game, 
Whoever gets this envelope, whoever sees the most lanterns, is then going to open it, determine the value of the envelope, and take that many coins. So there could be a ton of points in here. But something else cool happens every time you place the lantern out, you get to run an auction. And there's an auction pad that actually comes with this game that features a bunch of different rewards. Every time you place a lantern, one of these auctions is going to happen, and you're going to get to choose what's being auctioned off. But much like the secrecy with the envelope, no one gets to know what they're bidding for. You're going to highlight or check off one of these rewards and put it face down, and then everyone's going to do a blind bid. So you're bidding for something with your coins. You don't know what. You have an idea because you'll be able to see yeah. what's available. And every time one of these is bid off, it's done for the game. So when another player does an auction, you can you can kind of see what's left. So you know your chances are getting higher towards the end of the game of actually predicting what you're bidding for. Yeah, and the other cool thing about that bid is because it's blind, when you reveal, if say two people have four coins in their hand and someone has one, the four coins cancel each other out and the person with the one gets it. Right. Which is really, it, it adds so much flavor to a bid mechanic. It's very, very interesting. And if everybody bids the same, then the person that ran the auction gets the reward. Yeah. Or if everybody bids zero, you get the reward, which is pretty cool. So it adds this kind of whole deduction element of not necessarily social deduction, but a little bit of that. Try to figure out maybe what, are you bidding something that you want? Or something that you think nobody needs right now. They're all wasted coins. It definitely brings an element of mind games to Tang Garden that didn't exist before for sure. Right. And of course, like with all the different modules, this comes with a new character. This is the Vanquisher of Ghosts. He's going to give points for a new type of tile. And this is a large tile. This is a nocturnal tile. And you can actually use these even in the base game if you want to switch up your tiles. But these nocturnal tiles are a new type of landscape and that Vanquisher of Ghosts is going to score off of them. So they'll go, you know, according to normal placement rules. In addition, he's going to get you three coins at the end of the game for every lantern icon he sees. So there's lanterns out here and these landscape tiles have lanterns on them as well. Yeah, so we've talked about autumn. Mm -hmm. We've talked about winter, mm -hmm. spring. What's that leave, Ryan? Fall? No, summer. <laughs> summer is the last season that is in this expansion. And summer brings a co-op game oh, yeah, to Tang a... Garden. And this makes the whole concept of what you're doing out here on the board quite a bit more tricky. Because you're going to start by having overseers on the starting tile. Now these overseers are very important because you can only place garden tiles adjacent to those overseers. Now that includes orthogonal and diagonal. Yeah, yeah and that's tougher than it seems because yeah. part of the game is figuring out ways to move these so that you can actually spread out and start building into other <clears throat> areas. Because the goal of the game, and like David said, cooperative goal, is to try to fulfill requests. And this module comes with an entire stack of request tiles, and they're gonna kind of form a market. You're gonna have three available anytime. And what you're basically doing is assigning those tiles to these spaces, giving yourself objectives you have to complete. Yeah, and not only are these request tiles in and of themselves a challenge to complete, but they're very spatial. One of the things you're gonna be doing during the game is going to be spending money that you accumulate because there's a lot of core mechanisms taken out of Tang Garden here because there's really no end of game scoring. Right, sure. You're either gonna win or you're gonna lose. But these things are gonna be placed out by spending $10 to replace the token with the tile. Now, why would I put this tile here as opposed to over here? Well, because these tiles are in two different varieties. There's quadrant ones and then there's landscape ones. The quadrant ones are going to score for the things on the tile that it's asking for in that quadrant. Right. So we would need three of each of these different landscape icons in this quadrant to fulfill this. Now, fulfilling it is an optional and free action on an active player's turn. If you've done that thing, you can simply put this token back on top of it to say you've fulfilled it. The landscape ones are going to want whatever it's asking for associated with the closest landscape that it's attached to. So this one would be this, although this isn't a landscape tile, it would be asking for things found in this landscape here. Right, and once you set one of these, your goal of course is to try to achieve that. However, they do give you a little bit of flexibility. They yeah. give you some tokens that you can spend and these tokens are most likely gonna be spent to move your overseers around to free up space, but you can also use them to swap out tiles you've already placed. You can do that by spending your tokens. Of course, you only get three of these, and you have to spend 10 coins to flip them. 
back to refresh them basically. So while coins aren't worth victory points anymore, they're still very important to earn over the course of the game because you're gonna be having to spend them. Yeah, the main way these are used is you can exhaust them, like Ryan said, to move one of the overseers. Now the overseer has to go to another sort of character, character spot, spot yeah. on the board. So like he said, you're gonna to have to build those out. There's also these little viewpoint tokens that are gonna be added to the board that give you even more places to put characters. Because placing characters mm -hmm. too is how you're gonna make your money. When you place a character, in the normal game, you're going to keep that card for end of game scoring. In this game, the moment you place them, you're going to collect the coin for that end of game scoring, yeah. if you will, and then discard the card. But you need to keep that coin flowing because you need it to spend to get those request tiles out right. in the first place before you can even try to achieve them. Winning, of course, like David mentioned, being filling all those request tokens or losing in two different ways, either by exhausting all of those tokens and basically not having one available when you need one, you just lose the game. Or if the decoration deck is completely empty, you lose the game. So you're kind of racing the clock a little bit. You need those decorations to get coins and things like that. Yeah. And you need these tokens to do effects during the game. So you're going to be kind of using these a lot as you play. Yeah, cycling through that decoration deck is going to feel quite a bit different in this one because, like you said, it's going to be one of the clocks. I do think the approval tokens are going to be more likely the situation. Well, probably. Because you're going to want to use these quite a bit. Now, the ex that brings me to the extra character, and that's the actress. Because you can use one of these approval tokens to ignore the supervisors and build where you want, but that's also kind of what you can do with the actress. When you influence the actress, and she's going to be just shuffled into the character deck at the beginning of the game, you're also going to take a unique lantern token that allows you to do that same thing. It allows you to ignore a supervisor. Mm -hmm. And just like base Tang Garden, you can refresh some of these if you've collected some of these right. landscape tokens. So you might be able to use that maybe two, maybe three times. But it's a very powerful character. And then two of the base characters are also a little unique in this game. The Emperor and the Lady. These are probably two of the more higher scoring cards yeah, during the game. they are, for sure. And like I said, the characters are discarded, uh, so it works a little bit differently. But these two are going to be face up in the display in addition to the base two cards and always available to influence. When you influence these, though, they come with a little bit of a penalty because one is going to replace one supervisor and the other is going to replace the other, right. thereby effectively making it just one supervisor that you have left. So obviously you're not going to want to do this until the end of the game, but it might be in the situation that you've built up to score a lot of coin right. to spend to get some of these approval tokens flip back over and kind of extend your game. And once you get into a spot where one of these tokens, or maybe you don't even need to move it or you're done building off of it, that's a good time to replace yeah. it with one of those because they can get you a lot of coins. And I think you kind of have to build your tableau with those objectives in mind, which you will need those to complete the mission. Yeah, for sure. There's a reason why they chose those two characters to be out there. So you're going to want to take a look at what their end game scoring is and truly build the landscapes like that. Uh, now, in addition to those four seasons, right. there are a couple more. We know a little less about the details two, here. Two more. Yeah, two more. And they're, they're still kind of season themed. Yes, that's true. Solstice and Equinox. And Solstice is effectively an expert mode of version of the right, game. Right, it's supposed to be. Now, we don't have the expert components here, no. but it's they're calling it expert mode. You have a different player board and some other different components that are supposed to make the base game harder. And I believe that you can mix and match the expert mode with the different modules. Yeah, it includes a lot of extra things to it. And yes, you can tap into somewhat of, of the other modules add to it. Now, the other one, Equinox is what I'm most interested in and what we have the least here, unfortunately. Yeah, we don't have Equinox, I'd love to get a but... hold of it, but Equinox adds a worker placement mechanism to the game. You're actually doing things, resource management, yeah. using workers to collect resources and building even more than what you're currently building in Tangard. Right, you could build little like pagodas, like pagodas on each very one big of these pagodas four, in the corners, which, yeah. is, which is pretty cool. I mean, I like the, the twist that that brings to it. Again, I don't know if that's mix and match with the other different modules. Yeah. But it sounds pretty interesting to me. Yeah, and if you want any more information about any of these, their Kickstarter is up and running, yeah. so you can take a look at each one of these. They have a nice little description and a little bit about all the components that are included in each. If you have any questions, though, that we didn't cover here, and I'm sure that's quite a bit, <laughs> please make them in the comments below, and we'll try to answer what we can. Until next time, of course, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. Congratulations, you got to the end of one of our videos. Now, if you want more practice, just click on the video over here. It's another video. You might not have seen it yet, so click on it. If you don't want to do that, at least 
click on the subscription button below. That always helps us. And if you want notifications, please ring that bell.